Hey, welcome back, family. I haven't done one of these videos in a minute. I've shown you how I do my lighting. I've shown you how I edit my audio. Let's talk about how I edit my videos. Let's go. I will do a separate video about how I set up my camera because that's really important. The same way with audio. You know, when you edit audio, you need a good quality file, a good sound straight off the bat. It should sound pretty good before you put anything on top of it, plugins and all that stuff like that. Same thing with video, you wanna have a good file. So I've shown you how I do my lighting um, and I will show how I get a good quality file out of the camera as well. But assuming you have a good quality video, let's go ahead and now tweak it to make it look even better, look more appealing. So I'm in Final Cut Pro, that's what I edit in and Final Cut Pro is only available on MacBooks. And I'll try to show you, I use a particular plugin called uh, Color Finale Pro, but most of what it does is available within Final Cut now, uh, but it's just a little easier workflow. I think it's a $100 plugin, but it's a one-time thing. I paid $100 for it a few years ago. I've made that money back through my video. So invest in your stuff. Yes, try to do the, the, the more affordable workarounds as you go, but when you can't afford it, if you have to push your budget a little bit, I really, uh, I really encourage people investing in good quality plug-in and plugins and equipment for the long haul. So uh, I'm in Final Cut Pro and I've shown you already how I edit my audio. So I have a good audio. Let me show you what the audio sounds like straight into the camera. This is a video I just did called Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. <laughs> Sweet. So that's straight camera audio. It's not even a microphone on the camera. It's just that is the camera audio. And I'll take the file that I just edited in Final I'm sorry, in Logic, and I'll try to line it up with the audio here. So I'll zoom in. And I normally put the cursor right here at some spot. Or you can also clap. It gives you a nice high spike so you can point it out. I didn't do a clap for this. And I just try to line up the wave files to make sure. And then I'll play it to make sure they sound kind of in sync. And to please the Lord. All right, so clearly that's doubling too much. So probably a little more to the left. Let's try it again. And to please. A little better. And to please. A little better. Maybe nudge it a little more. There's also, you know, a, a, a way within Final Cut that just automatically syncs it. And to please the Lord, but you don't really. It's going to be a little phasing because they are technically two different audios, even though they are the same performance. Um, one camera is getting a different type of quality of audio. from music. But it seems pretty cool. So once I have that lined up, I just go ahead and turn the audio down, mute it on the on the video, and now all you hear is the audio. Do ya? It goes like this. Well, there you go. And that's how I do my audio for, I do a one take and it feels more natural that way. All right, now I'll get an adjustment layer over my video. You can do all of this on the actual video file, but adjustment layers are much easier for me. Uh, I'll put a link in the description on what I use. For Final Cut, adjustment layers are not native, and so you have to do this weird workaround. I don't get why Final Cut won't just add it. It's such a basic thing. Adobe Premiere Pro has it. It's one of the great things about Adobe. I, I don't really like Adobe like that, but because this is Final Cut is just way easier. I'm like, just make an adjustment layer. But I make an adjustment layer, but anyways, this video still works for editing right on the video, but adjustment layers are much easier, uh, a much easier workflow when you're dealing with multiple video clips. If you're just dealing with one long video clip, cool, but editing, chopping stuff up, adjustment layers all the way. Okay, so I'm on the, on the adjustment layer, but you can do this on here. So I have Color Finale Pro, you can throw that on there, or I'll also speak about the ways that you can do it within, natively within Final Cut Pro. So I have Color Finale Pro here. Uh, clearly something just happened to it, maybe just some kind of, uh, let me see if I can just reset all parameters, uh, reset everything to where it's just bare bones. Because normally, once you have this done one time, you just fly the adjustment layer, you copy and paste it over to your other videos so they, so they all have a consistent look. And I don't really do all this every single video. It's just like, I throw the adjustment layer on there and then I'll kind of tweak the exposure and contrast and be done with it. 
boom. All right. So, and I eyeball most of my stuff. I know there's a, a, a very specific way of doing this that color graders out there, editors will show you, but I really be eyeballing stuff. If it feels good to my eye, cool. All right. So exposure seems a little low to me. So I'm going to bring up the exposure. And the way you can do exposure within Final Cut natively is uh, color board up within the effects, and you can throw color board on there. And so I'll go back and forth between color board so you know what I'm talking about. And you just go to exposure, and you can, like, adjust the exposure there. Boom. You want to bring it, bring it darker, lighter, boom. All right, exposure. So I want to make my exposure a little brighter, but once you bring the exposure up, it also kind of makes the video look a little flat. So I want to bring my contrast up a little bit. Uh, way you can do that, I believe, is also color wheels. So I have that's within the that's also within um, natively within the effects in Final Cut. You can throw color wheels on there. Um, scroll down. Uh, actually, you know what? To, you can also boost contrast within color. Let's do it this way. Color board uh, is basically taking the black dot here and then dragging it down, and it only drink, brings down the black. So you, now you have a contrast between your, your highlights and your shadows. That feels pretty cool to me. Already have a good looking video. It looks pretty decent to me. Um, and then sometimes I mess with warmth and tint. So with the white balance, maybe I want it a little warmer. Too warm. When I start bringing up the warmth, it gets a little green. So tint, um, you can edit on within color wheels if you want to mess around with the tint of things. Um, you go down to tint right here within color wheels. I'm doing it in color finale. And the tint, basically, your uh, temperature slider deals with the blue and the reddishness of the video. So the more warm I go, the more orange it looks, so the more you know, the higher temperature this way, the more warm and kind of yellowish orange, you know, brings out the yellows and stuff in there. If I want to go cooler, it's blue. So sometimes your video looks too blue when you get it out the camera, so you want to go warm. Sometimes it's way too warm, I want to bring it a little cooler. And sometimes it's just a, a matter of preference. I want it, I, maybe you want it to look a little warm, so cool. And then tint is about the magenta and the green. So sometimes it looks too green in your video, so you want to make it more magenta. And sometimes your video looks too magenta. It's like, oh, that's a weird tint, so I'll bring it back more green. So you just kind of have to eyeball it there. I don't think I really need to do anything with it because it's kind of where it, uh, now that I've adjusted it, it does look kind of green. So I'll go a little more magenta. And now I want my colors to pop a little bit. You can saturate it, bring the, make the colors pop more. So desaturation is going completely black and white. Saturation is just like making that joint look like a Oompa Loompa. I don't want to look like a Oompa Loompa, but I do want my colors to pop, look a little vibrant. That's my style. Some people like a more desaturated look, but for my videos, I like a little, it feels natural in that way. So I'll bump up the saturation just a little bit to kind of make it pop. Sorry for the ASMR sipping of the tea. Uh, I've had a sore throat for like the past three days, but no symptoms. All right, now within Color Finale, I'll start messing with my vector. This is where I think Color Finale really comes to shine uh, because I can really get in with this. I think you can do this within curves. So I put in a, a curves layer within my editor, but I think you can do curves within, yeah, within Final Cut natively so I would drag the curves on here if you don't have the plug-in and you can kind of do similar what I'm about to do in Final Cut okay I'm sorry within color finale so I'm in color finale I like to have a little faded look kind of softens the video up some gives it a look now we're going for character I think this video looks pretty decent just like this uh, but now I want it to have a little character right so I'll do this to all four of these uh, squares here. So I'll put a dot, I'll click on this line here, probably like three up. This is all down to preference at this point. It's just stylizing it and I want to fade my blacks. If I go like this, that's crazy. But everything's about subtlety. If you do a bunch of little st subtle stuff, it comes out to a really cool look, but you don't want to overdo any one thing you do. So that's a little faded. I'll do the same thing to my reds. Look at that look already. We already got a slight look. I'm not even really dragging these up a lot. And 
I do that to my blues as well, just kind of fading everything. That's a cool little look. Uh, and maybe it makes me want to go back and add a little more contrast to the video because it took away some of my contrast, which I kind of want to do, but I don't want to do too much. We've already got a look right there. That's a cool look to me. Maybe, uh, maybe not as much. I'm probably overdoing it, right? Okay, cool. Try to keep this quick as possible. Now I'll go to my vectors. And vectors is cool because now you can manipulate specific colors. Say in your video, your blues are too blue, your greens are too green. Um, or maybe your reds aren't really red. Your skin tones don't look that natural. Or your greens look a little blue. Like this is where you can kind of dial in without affecting all the other colors in the video. I just want to affect specific colors. And typically, the one I mess with the most is probably my reds and my yellows because that's where skin tones land. Skin tones, especially for black people, I don't really edit a lot of white skin because I'm usually just editing myself. So hopefully you'll figure out where this lies for you. But for definitely for black people, I think it's just in general, but definitely for dark skinned people, you're going to have a lot of reds and yellows. Okay, a little red bone, right? That's where that term comes from is a red undertone to the skin. So right now my skin looks okay. And what I'll do sometimes is kind of mess around. So I'll mess with my hues on here. Can you do this natively within? I'm not exactly sure how to do it within, maybe within color wheels. That's probably where it would be natively within. Yeah. So natively within Final Cut, I would go to global and then there I have like my red, green, blue, and I can like, which is not quite the same, but it is there. Like I can make my reds more red, my greens more green, like, or make the whole video green actually. Actually, this is not the same. That's affecting the entire picture. I don't wanna do that. I only wanna affect the specific color. So I'm going for reds right now. I wanna make my red, see how I can make my red look purple or I can make it look green. <laughs> Uh, and sometimes, you know, you just want to, that looks weird. I think the, the skin tones in my, this video right now look pretty decent to me. Maybe I bump up the saturation to make it pop a little more. And sometimes you'll do a lot of editing and then you're not, your eyes get lost in, in the video and you're like, is this looking weird or not? I don't know. It feels good to me, but I'm not sure. It's great every so often to literally walk away from your computer screen, just give your eyes a rest in general, come back and then you'll see it. You're like, oh wow, this feels weird. Or even bring in a video that you've done in the past, compare it to what you're doing now. Like, oh, okay, this looks mad weird. So I'm kind of okay with this. Maybe I'll mess with the yellows because yellows are also in the skin. See how the, if I mess with yellow, is it? Doesn't affect it as much as the reds, but it's definitely in there. And I just wanted to look natural. And I think that, to my eyes, that's what my skin looks like in general. Maybe a little exaggerated, but that's what my skin looks like. And then maybe bring the saturation down so it's not as punchy. Boom. All right, last thing we're going to do is add a LUT. This is the last thing on it. I love, I love LUTs. That's the last kind of like cap on it. So what I did right here is essentially color correcting with a little stylization. Color correcting is just getting your good basic image look. So this is just a basic image look. Color grading is where you add a, look, a style, you know. So when I faded the curves, that's kind of not really color um, correcting. That's kind of adding a style to it, but somewhere in between. All right, so now I'm going to go to my LUTs. Uh, I think LUTs are here for, and then if you want to add a LUT, look up on YouTube how to add LUTs into your program, but, um, you know, you throw custom LUT onto your, onto your file. I do it within uh, Color Finale. And basically all I do, you can literally Google this. I think it's like the M31, that's the most popular one, is the name of it, but essentially a teal and orange, and they're free. Just look up teal and orange. LUT and try them out. This LUT is it's just a good, like, very popular stylization, but it can be a little extreme. 
So the cool thing about this is that you can adjust the opacity within Color Finale or natively within Final Cut Pro, you can adjust the um, opacity. So I'm gonna insert the teal and orange, and there's my look. That looks kinda cool. It's a little exaggerated. That might be your look. So maybe I want it to look this exaggerated and I'll go back into my vectors and it's, it affects my skins. So I'll go back and maybe, it, you know, fool with the, uh, with the skin tones and kind of make them look more natural again. You know, I could do that. That's a cool look. That could be a great look. Or I can also just go to my opacity here and take it down to zero. So basically I'm taking the, the, the LUT completely off and then slowly, that kind of like resets my eyes and then I'll slowly bring it back in to see how I feel about it. I don't know why I'm loving it at 100% right now. I normally don't. I probably need to walk away from the video for a bit. But let me look at it now. Yeah, full that looks great. This is not how the original video, look at those quads, go Joe. This is not the, how the original video looks on YouTube right now, but I, I don't know. My eyes change from day to day, I, you know, my, my, my feelings about it. I really like this look. Wow. Let's just do that for now. For this sake, run it. We'll just do that. Last thing I add on here is a transform, which does a slow pan in. So when you're doing one steady shot on a performance, you don't, maybe not for all your videos you do, but for performances, I love to do a little slow pan in because I don't have a multicam setup. I'm a one man shooter. Maybe you're a one woman or whatever you identify as shooter. And you want to add um, as, you know, as much movement as you possibly can while only having one camera because it makes it more interesting to the viewer, even if they don't really notice that they notice it. So what I want to do is, is um, add a transfer. Actually, I'm going to reset because this is already on my template. All right, so it's my transform tool. And I want to do some keyframing. I want to be keyframing here. So at the beginning of it, I'm going to start at the beginning of this clip, and I want it to be 100% screen. So basically, all the video that's there, there's no crop on this video. And what I'm going to do is slowly crop this video in. So I will add a keyframe, a little yellow dot there for position, and then also another keyframe for scale, right? So it's 100%. And then I'll go somewhere towards the end of the video, maybe say about two thirds through it somewhere here, maybe a little more, maybe three fourths through, I don't know. Because I don't want it to keep zooming in at the last second. I kind of want it to already be done, done with this full zoom. And you can put this wherever you feel creatively inclined to put it. You can do it, you want it to zoom in very fast and you're gonna start up way over here. Or if you want to do a very gradual slope pan in, I'll do it right here. I don't know why I'm giving away my secrets right now. Some of you already know how to do this. It's very basic. I just don't want y'all making y'all videos look exactly like mine. That's all. All right. So, all right. So now I need to create a new keyframe. So I'll add a keyframe here. You, you can click add over here, or you can just click the little diamond right next to scale. It's locking in there. Now let's go over to our little transform logo over here. Click that. And now a little square comes. And I'm shooting in 4K, and I'm on a 4K timeline, so technically you are losing a little resolution when you do this, because you're essentially taking a 4K video and trying to expand it over, uh, you're zooming in tighter, uh, and essentially over a technically a larger than 4K space. But it's really unnoticeable. People don't, it's still a great quality. You, want, you don't want to do it, you don't want to zoom in too much because one, that might look weird, and two, you will start to notice the loss of resolution. But as long as you do it very little, no one's gonna really notice it, even on a, a large TV screen, and especially on an iPhone or a laptop, they're not gonna really notice it. So I'm gonna drag this to zoom in. I want like a slow crap, no, crop. Normally I go to no more than like 130%. See the scale over here, 130%? That's good. And then I'll take this center point here and I want to drag it because now that I've zoomed in, you know, I still want my face to be uh, an aesthetically pleasing spot in the video. So I'll probably drag it here, but notice at the top, I'm, I'm, I'm dragging it too much. Now there's a black bar at the top. So I want it to still fill up the whole screen. And maybe I'll zoom in just a little more. Maybe I can go to 140. That's probably my, 145 is probably my max max. Before I feel like I'm losing too much quality. 
All right, and you see that red line? That's the path that this video is gonna take. Because it's saying, okay, you started here, I locked in a keyframe here, and now the keyframe is gonna move the video to here. So let's start from the beginning, and now you'll see the slow pan in. Look at the edges of the video. I heard there was a secret chord that David played, and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for you. So it just feels like you're slowly getting closer and closer to the performer. I'll fast forward. We're even closer, even closer, and I think it's done zooming in at that point. Boom! Got your video. I did this in less than 25 minutes. I think that's pretty dang great. Hope that was helpful. Leave some comments, questions in the comment section. What are other videos that you want to know about aside from how I set up my camera, what camera do I shoot on, and what are some other things that you can do to make your videos look better? Um, leave some feedback. What, do you, what are some things that you do for your videos that make your videos feel unique and um, specific to your style. I would love to hear it. Love y'all.